What's going on, guys? I want to welcome you back. You know what day it is? It's Tuesday, so we got the brand new card dropping today in Cannonball. Is he going to make a big splash in the Marvel Snap meta, or is he simply an easy pass? And I know what you're thinking. Cozy, didn't you say this line already for your title of the Snapchat? And uh, yes, I did. It's catchy, okay? Well, today, ladies and gents, I'm going to give all of my thoughts after playing a good amount of Cannonball. Where do I see him fitting into Marvel Snap? What are his best decks, synergies, and card combos that you should be playing with him? And ultimately answer... Is he worth buying with your spotlight caches? So who is Cannonball? Well, in Marvel, he was born Samuel Zachary Guthrie. His life took a drastic turn when his mutant ability to propel himself through the air manifested during a mine collapse. I thought maybe I could work the mines with you guys. Ultimately leading him into a conflict with the Hellfire Club and joining the new mutants under Professor Xavier's guidance. Over time, Cannonball's leadership within the team grew alongside endearing friendships, notably with Sunspot. And later on, Cannonball and the other new mutants left the X-Men's supervision and joined forces with the mysterious Warhawk Cable to become the Hard Edge X-Force, in which Cannonball became the second command of that team. Well, in Marvel Snap, guys, he's a five cost, eight power card with the ability on reveal Cannonball is going to move the highest powered enemy card away from the location. I'll keep that in mind. Highest power, not highest cost. If he cannot move a card from that location, he destroys that card and replaces it with a rock. Now, focusing on the word can't move, that means the opponent obviously has some other locations filled or there's something like Professor X there. You see, guys, five cost drops are pretty tricky, right? Like Cannonball has to match up to the assignment of, you know, something like Devil Dinosaur, Iron Man, Mockingbird, Legion sarah vision like these plug and play five cost drops that are awesome or he has to bring enough to an archetype something like jane foster or a nihilist to also make sense and that's what we're going to talk about today does cannonball's ability work enough with the archetype that he's in and probably the hardest cost assignment to really be worth the bang and buck let's jump into the star ratings guys we start with a competitive tier and for now we're going to give him a two and a half star and that's mainly because he's just coming out at a tough time in marvel snap he's not going to shake up the meta he's not even really like imperative in the decks that he does fit in other cards can definitely fit in that spot and because of that uh he's replaceable and that ultimately gives him a pretty low star rating now with that we'll get to it in a little bit i do think he might get adjusted but we move on to the fun factor and uh he, he's definitely a fun card i think that's the purpose of him in snap I'm gonna give him about a three and a half here being able to move cards disrupt your opponent i mean getting rid of cards and replacing them with a freaking rock is epic definitely a fun card cool and novelty but overall you know just more fun than good next up is flexibility guys and i'm gonna give him about a two star here i mean yes he can theoretically work into a large amount of decks but you're gonna want other cards that we just discussed in the five cost slot over him a good chunk of the time now this does have to do with the meta and if decks are playing a lot of cards and it makes it very easy to get his ability to destroy but for the most part he's not extremely flexible in terms of where he excels and then lastly we have the adjustment category and i i truly think he's going to become a 5-9 guys i think his stats kind of reflect that uh, if we look at other comparable five cost drops that's about where he fits overall gonna give him about a two here Maybe he just ends up in the same fate as Spider-Man 2099. But as we know, in case of like Hercules and now Meek, they get pretty quick on the adjustments to these cards. If you don't have Miss Marvel and you end up getting Cannonball, you know, you can hold your head up because maybe just maybe he does get that buff and you got two good cards. So what do I like about Cannonball other than his great hair? Uh, mainly, he's good at clogging, which can definitely win you games going into turn six. So I like him on turn five and or turn six. That's always good to destroy a card. We have a targeted way to destroy a card, which is rare in Marvel Snap. Can definitely be nice and lead to a lot of stealing of some cubes because your opponent was depending on that devil dinosaur and then you moved him somewhere else. Uh, so I think he's going to be a good cube stealer as well. Uh, and that's mainly going to be the pros of what he does. The cons, you guys kind of already know it. It's the value. It's the power. It's the RNG. You can't really control if your opponent is going to play a deck that fills their location. So you have to include those cards yourself. And speaking of which, what are the best synergies with Cannonball? We start as always with the MVPs, the best synergized cards. And we've got to start with Kingpin and Craven. Naturally, the movement gods of each side, the negative power, the positive power. Cannonball is going to love this. If he doesn't destroy a card, most of the time, you can at least aim it where, you know, maybe you get negative two power on their card or plus two on your side with Craven. Overall, pretty solid synergy there. And you're going to have that in a good amount of your Cannonball decks. 
Uh, debris, green goblin, ways to clog up their side cannot be understated. If you're going more of the junk route or even mixed in with the kingpin, uh, this is definitely the card you're going to want to include for their cost assignment compared to something like hobgoblin, who I do have in the other synergy, but he's a little bit too expensive to fully utilize cannonball. Lastly, we have a couple of X-Men. Professor X is one of the surefire ways to lock down a lane easily. However, obviously, he's five cost, so this can presents some trouble and that finally leads us to something like hope summers or psylocke maybe even wave and that is obviously being able to cheat him out not having to use fully that five energy cost uh, i like hope summers a lot here i also think psylocke pixie those kind of cards can work to cheapen the weight assignment of his energy now when looking at other synergies clearly guys other x-men gene gray is a lot of fun we've seen these movement decks work with gene gray before things like jeff spider-man nightcrawler and what's great about this is cannonball can move cards out of gene gray's lane forcing your opponent to continue to fill said lane. On top of that, you're also filling a lane. So if you don't draw Cannonball, you can fill up at least one lane and then you get a little bit of a better odd to destroy a card later. He's an on reveal. So Wong and maybe even Grandmaster can be at play here. Daredevil on turn five is always great to see if maybe they do fill up a location. You can try to clog a location with that insight. I don't love it, but yes, priority cards aren't bad. Things like Ghost could be useful here. Or if you want to just go all in on the destruction, maybe just maybe no now lastly guys we do have other movement cards and miles morales is probably my favorite here uh an easy move to get him cheap in or at the very least you can go ahead and destroy a card and you still have miles in that movement deck to get the value there now looking at those synergized options i mean if you could pull off something like moving an onslaught from the iron man lane against tribunal maybe wong maybe black panther maybe venom from an arnim zola Maybe you just move a null in general from a lane that they were just expecting that null to win. There are some big flips that you can do to win, which is awesome, but it tends that these cards don't find their ways in a lot of decks because people would rather go with more consistent options here. Uh, but with that being said, if you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you know, Mobster Move a couple of weeks back, actually probably like freaking months back now, I don't even know what day it is. Uh, it was a solid deck, a sleeper deck, if you will. Pretty competitive, a lot of value cards and ways to win with it. And naturally, I think Cannonball is going to fit right there. And that brings us with today's deck highlight. Today's deck, we've got the Cannon Mob. And again, this is a lot like the Toxic Mobster. We have a lot of cards just in love with the movement style between Craven and Kingpin. We've got the Jeff, Nightcrawler, and Silk all there just to help out Craven get boosted up by the Elsa Bloodstone. And then ultimately, we have a couple of tech cards like Shang-Chi, now Cannonball, Arrow, and Magneto. Obviously, the last three there are going to help out our Craven or Kingpin, which is also nice. And as you can see, guys, this deck is just full of kind of low-cost, high-value cards. And we also have a good amount of spots for flexible options. You can absolutely flex out different cards here. I would say Elsa, Shang-Chi, and then one of either Polaris or Spider-Man are going to be the most flexible options. And then you can plug in things like Miles Morales. You can go with Negasonic, even Jean Grey, Hope Summers. Those all kind of work with what the deck's trying to do. Naturally, Vision here makes a lot of sense if you want to go with the Elsa Bloodstone route and you don't want as many tech cards or you don't need the arrow. Uh, I do like the option between arrow and cannibal because you kind of have something no matter what they play. But uh, Vision obviously is going to benefit off the Elsa. You can also go crazy cheeky. And this is for more, I would say, I don't know, experienced players. But you can go with Green Goblin, Vulture, and Ghost Spider. Ton of fun to be A playing things like Craven, Green Goblin, combined with Vulture, like all together, it's just all the Spidey villains. Uh, but what's great about this is you can junk very easily and you can make Green Goblin just a devastating card. So you can send over Green Goblin, uh, you have Kingpin down already, and then you play Ghost Spider, and that's going to whip the Green Goblin from your opponent's side over to a forced new side where the Kingpin is, negative five in that lane, and now all of a sudden you're really cooking. So ton of fun and just different options you can go with. Now you're going to see a little bit of that deck today, but mainly guys, we are focused on this beautiful junk cannon. Now this is going to be uh, what looks like a Galactus deck, but Galactus just fits perfectly in the junk archetype. So he's a little bit of a alternate win condition, if you will. Right off the bat, let's just talk about the flex options because some of you guys might be looking at the deck. Maybe you're already headed for the comments saying, I don't have Pixie. I don't have Selene. These don't have to be within the deck, uh, but I do like Pixie in the deck. I think it's great to have this alternative lower cost option to potentially ramp out these high cost cards like Galactus, Cannonball, Annihilus, and Professor X. Right off the rip, it looks like it's a very expensive deck, and you're somewhat right, but we have a lot of ways to cheapen it up. 
via Ravona and Pixie. Uh, Pixie can be replaced with either Hope Summers, maybe Psylocke, even Wave if you don't have access to the other ones. But really, guys, we are doing what Junk does best. We're playing down Hood when we can, followed by Green Goblin, Hobgoblin to scare the opponent into thinking we might play Galactus. And then we look at our later draws, whether it's a Nihilus to win the game, Galactus, or we can shut down a lane early with Professor X and play Cannonball. We can Debris and mess them up that way. Best part about this deck, guys, is I love saving the demon and playing it with one of our five drops. And or if you have Galactus down and you got him out early because of, let's say, Pixie. Guys, Cannonball into Galactus is awesome because there's nowhere where those cards can move and just really just cheeky synergy. If you can get Ravona down on two, you now have Pixie. You have Green Goblin, Hobgoblin, Professor X, a lot of discounted cards there. And then you can also go with other flex options such as Mockingbird. You've got the Hood. You've got even the Void in there. Debris to cheapen her down if you got her last week. Really great play there. You could go with Dr. Octopus and Shang-Chi. Doc Ock is great for clogging Shang-Chi for that kind of insurance. And then that way your Cannonball can get more value. And then you can even go the crazy route of doing Grandmaster, Luke Cage, and Hazmat. Grandmaster, actually pretty good here with Ravona. You can do Cannonball twice. Heck, if you whiffed on Galactus, you could do him again. Debris, you could do twice. The Hood is good for two demons to so maybe cheapen a Mockingbird you might have. You can Pixie again, maybe if you feel like you didn't get the greatest cost swap. I mean, there's a lot of different options to go with there and definitely a super fun toxic build. So that's pretty much it, guys. I would probably save ultimately for Cannonball. There's going to be some cool highlights here, okay? But ultimately, next week is going to be a certified banger. We know that for sure. So I would probably lean towards that. But if you want to go for Miss Marvel, if you like movement, then hey, go crazy. Let's go and jump into some matches. And all right, Octopus PhD. We have Celine, the Hood, Green Goblin. Um, I think I'm going to go Hood first, actually. Just because we have Goblin, we'll get Demon and Celine out next turn. Let's go these two now and uh if we get galactus it's a surefire win because we have them ramped down and we also have two goblins ready to go kind of wish we didn't top deck hobgoblin so that green goblin would get what we need we love this let's snap, snap on it let's send over green goblin Okay, he goes Morbius that we also hit with a negative three. Absolutely brutal. This is a tough predicament. I kind of want to just go Century. We'll go Century mid. Let's hope that he went all out to try to win that. That's fine. Okay, we do have Galactus. Can't do anything with it. We have Cannonball as well. We could move him from there. Um... Definitely just go with the Hobgoblin here. And then what I think we're going to do is... Let's see what happens here, but... Okay, so we have Pryo. But I think what we're going to do... We have this... Okay, I think we're just going to move this Modok over. I guess I'm a little scared about... Mm, my hope is he fills this up with swarms, and uh, I think that's what's going to happen. We're going to move the Modok over. He does go first. So even if he plays a bigger card, we're able to move that card. I guess if he went hard mid, we would lose. Okay, cool. So we're going to just pick Apoc and or... Look at that, man. That was a, that, That's just textbook cannonball. I mean... Victory. The tough thing is there's just a lot of other ways to win. Like, that's a very difficult way to win. But uh, definitely, you know, it got the job done. Let's face it. And I guess he just top decked this. So that was lucky on his part. Okay, guys. We got Selene, Hood, Hobgoblin, and Annihilus. Obviously, we love the Selene play now. Let's go ahead and play her. He kills our Sentry. We Selene. And what do we kill? His ally. Beautiful. Uh, we also have our Hobgoblin at negative 11, which is brutal for that guy to catch up to. Uh, Ravona can go mid. Little bit of a bummer just with our draw. <laughs> Not much we could do about that. Let's go hood left side because uh, we do have the Annihilus play. We also have the Pro X play. So we have two different plays that can win. Uh, I'll probably do the Hobgoblin just to scare him. A Reality Stone. 
The space stone. Interesting. He fills left side. But our hood does nothing. That was brutal. Um, Pro X is great. I think this guy's probably screwed, though. Like, we can just hit him with this hobgoblin. Oh, snap. Then we either hit him with Pro X or Annihilus. And then we just, uh, we do our Galactus potentially here. Okay, the beautiful piece of this is that, uh, that's gonna be brutal for him. He might be able to play Blob there because he did, he did, uh, boost up the debris sweet i kind of want to just go pro x here making his life very difficult we definitely got to go pro x here make him make him think we're going uh galactus eventually but make it even harder and then if we do get the cannonball it's gonna be super easy to destroy something he does play a card there and if it's a decent power card we may be in trouble mockingbird all Ooh. systems go i tell you what guys that is that's tough. That is tough. But the fact that this just straight up wins the game is so awesome. There's no way AF stays. They're ranked 1,000 plus. They've done enough Marvel Snap to know. Jeff has already moved. Doesn't matter, really. You would think that they know better. He can't even do a turn as well, which is always like, you know. Oh my God, he stayed. Kneel before Galactus. Well, 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 guys. That was awesome. So what's cool is if we did have Cannonball... We would have killed the Magneto. And probably would have lost, though, because we didn't have another play outside of that. But it would have been cool to do so regardless. And Galactus just getting himself a free win. Victory. I'll be damned. All right, we got the Abbey. We have Pixie finally showing up. And uh, let's give this guy some fist bumps. Let's go Hood to start us out here. Obviously, we play for a potential Galactus. Uh, but that's not our main play lines. Pixie is most definitely getting played now. Uh, we already have Cannonball, so it is what it is, but we get the chance to... We have a lot of things happening. First of all, we get the draw. We don't uh, get the Pixie effect in draw, which is actually to our favor there because we did get, like, Debris already. Uh, a couple, you know, big cards like Pro X and Nihilus Galactus available. Bar with no name is very hot. What the hell? Very interesting. Let's go... Debris here would eliminate Galactus... Yeah, this is kind of a weird play. I think we end up going Jabri here. Uh, can't believe that guy would play Silk with Bar with No Name. We're just not going to play a card in there. Holy crap, we got a one power Galactus. Can't play that, unfortunately. Uh, but that is amazing. Uh, what the heck, dude? That, that would have been great. Snap! We are obviously going to be playing Century Mid and snapping because Bar with No Name is going to put Void over there. We don't really care about the Silk. We've definitely won that. So we just have to win one other lane. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. What's cool about this game, too, I think this guy's going to retreat before we can do it. Uh, but what's cool about this game is we can just cannonball something to Bar with No Name. Uh, as well. He kitty prides there. Uh, actually, pretty smart. Uh, but then also does the risky play by Spider-Man. So that guy's just a... He's crazy. Uh, Pro X is most definitely the play line here. And then uh, you guys will see, you know, the clear cut... Yeah, wait, let's do that. You guys will see the clear cut uh, way to win. And that would be Cannibal left side plus Demon. I mean, maybe this guy's got, I don't know, a Scarlet Witch or something uh, up his sleeve. I, I, I highly doubt it. Uh, he's out of here, but this right here is a very indicative play line of how to win. Uh, would have destroyed, what, the Vision and or Angela if he didn't move those. He gives us the fish, fist bumps, and it's game over. So really cool just game to showcase Victory. a lot of ways to win. I know that we didn't get a play cannonball, but you guys can see at least the play line there. Okay, we have a Nihilus, the Hood, Debris, ready to go. Let's go Hood, and we'll play him in the dead middle to start. See, I like Asteroid Dan for a couple reasons, mainly because we're going to play down Ravona now. We can play Debris on a lane, and then it'll put her in the middle lane, and then uh, we can Green Goblin that too. So we have a couple cool ways to just fill that middle lane for the Cannonball play, potential Cannonball play. Uh, Green Goblin's open now. So, like, yeah, a great example is we can go... 
And do we want to do this first, though? Yeah, that's fine. We're good to breed now. I am reborn. Okay. Cool. So we're, we're jammed in the middle, but we do have a Nihilus to play there. We do have our cannonball now, too. Um, and we also, yeah, this is, this is looking good. Let's go to play Century now. Oh, snap. We're also going to snap on that. And then we're going to play Nihilus next turn, followed by Cannonball Demon, probably. Alright, we'll keep it simple, guys. We're gonna go a Nihilus left side. I would go right side, we just can't risk that for now. Let's go left side of Nihilus, push over the hood, push over the void, and then next turn we just cannonball demon. Oh my gosh. One of these have to die, right? 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 I am Apocalypse. One of those have to die. I was like, come on. All three for three. Come on now. Come on now. All right, we push those two. I think he's gone, so we're not going to be able to see this play, probably. I hope we do. Uh, cannonball here. Demon here. This is really cool. I mean, we could also just go... Cannonball in the middle. But this is going to destroy one of these cards. I hope this guy plays it out. Oh my gosh, he does. That's so cool. So check this out. We just straight up punt Morbius into a rock. Just make him obsolete. Dead. Gone. All that work for nothing. And we got to win. Uh, that was such a textbook cannonball game. A lot of Victory. weird play lines. You got to think about it a lot. Uh, but I like that, man. That's awesome. That's killer. All right. We got Pixie, Hop, Goblin, Cannonball, Ravona. Really good opening plays here. Um, Death Domain. That's fine. Let's go Pixie first. Uh, eh, Ravona first. Because then that way we can at least play the Pixie for one and then if we get like green goblin we can capitalize on that oh i mean look at that that was exactly what we just said let's go pixie now left side green goblin right side i think we might even snap snap kind of have everything we need we'll see if wabajack stays in pixie gobbles there goes our galactus uh, Hobgoblin. Do we Hob now? Let's do it. Like, that guy can have white hot room, but what energy is he going to spend? <laughs> he might have a Nihilus, though. But we also have a Nihilus. Ooh. So if he fills this out, he's probably done. I think we'd go... I might just want to play Debris... Just Cannonball can probably do it as well. Just Cannonball. Yeah, let's go Cannonball left side. I guess it opens up a lane for him to play again. But again, I'm just not too worried about the play line here. He goes Blue Marvel. We push the Dazzler in the middle. So he's going to have middle location. He's going to go first, meaning this ought to do it, right? I mean, he'd have to play a seven or above. I don't think this deck is going to have that. Unless he does go with Onslaught, then, uh, you know, he, he'll win that way. Which this deck could have Onslaught. A little bit of a risky play, but we're going to we're gonna ship it. There blows. All right. Well, he had a Patriot and a Shang-Chi. And we got to win. We got to win by not playing a huge card. So there you go. Victory. I guess that's one good thing about Cannonball being a 5-8. And uh, this just deck doesn't have any really big cards. It's kind of Shang-Chi proof outside of Sentry. Okay, we got Quantum Tunnel, which I love that location with the deck we're playing. And uh, pretty scrub opening hand. Sinister London, Mamma Mia. A lot of debris about to happen. A lot of Hobgoblins. We have Asgard. Dude, 
We're gonna snap. We're gonna double debris it up, double hobbits up. I mean, you could do quantum tunnel, but nah. If this guy plays ball with us the whole time, we get to play double cannonball, and that's gonna be sweet. Yo, Luke Cage is frightening. Because this guy could easily go with the hazmat bomb, but we do have a Nihilus. Let's go double century now. So here's the thing. Do we just go double pro X now? But then we're locked. We're locked to that. Or do we just play pro X here? Then we play a Nihilus. Or do we go double? Oh my God. Do we do this? If he does play the hazmat now, it could spell trouble. It, this is going to be... This is just a fun game regardless. Let's go <laughs> Hobgoblin twice. And then we might just do the uh, the Annihilus last. All right, so we go Hob. If he played Hob or Green Gob, it's bad. Oh, my God. I am He's out of here. Iron Man. I am Iron Man. Okay. Okay. So... There was a lot of ways to win. <laughs> Victory. We could have cannonballed. We could have an Nihilist. Could have Pro X before he did anything. That was just sweet. Okay, Spidey P. We have our Celine now. We don't have an Nihilist. Luckily, we know... Um, we're going to go Hood first because we already know what's about to happen here. We're going to play Celine and the Demon. Hobgoblin's going to take the hit. If we can get a Nihilist or Galactus here, we're looking good. That changes... A couple things. Oh my god. Yo, do we go Galactus now? Do we do we do it? We're doing it. Snap. Where is he not gonna play? Where is he not gonna play, guys? Uh my my heart says crimson. Uh we can't play the demon if we do that. Right is tempting. He doesn't know this location. Which is why we're gonna play there. Yeah, let's go. What are you playing, bud? Daredevil? Fantastic. Pro X. Hey man. Hey, good play. Psych. Kneel before Galactus. Oh, Okay, we love it. Let's see if we just get the two cubes right off it. Uh, we can demon, we can hop gobs. We can green gobs. Let's green gobs first. All of this is stupid. It's just going to destroy everything. Don't know what I'm doing. It's okay, though. Let's hope he really tries to win Hala. You know, like he plays his best cards here. Then green goblin doesn't die for nothing. Okay. We're going to go Celine. To double down on the hobgobs. Then we play hobgobs. Then we play like, I don't know, cannibal. Okay, he goes Hope Summers. Hobgobs getting off for sure. Because there's nothing he can do to stop it. And then we win. We're going to move cannonball. Or we can play cannonball and just kill his best card if he does play one now. This is just a textbook. Textbook. Unless he plays Hobgoblin. And then, uh, you know. What he's not doing. We got Wave into Ravona. Uh, so we kill the Wave. Yeah, I don't see him catching up in this, right? Because we kill the Wave. Unless he has a giant card I'm unaware of. Maybe he's got a Nihilus or something. But we're filling, so, you know. Not too worried. But we kill the... Yeah, okay. I was like, but we kill the wave. Victory. So we'd be uh, sitting pretty, I think. But there you go. That's a fun one. Another cannonball that I didn't get to play that I wish I could have. Oh, my God. Peak eighth grade humor. All right. Let's get Nightcrawler out now. Dark Dimension is kind of a weird location. Especially because we're not playing a, uh, a Lyoth and odds are Boops is playing a Lyoth. Mojo... Mojo World. Let's go Kingpin right side. We got a Phoenix Force deck. Hello. Well, let's go ahead and swiftly ruin this guy's day. Oh, snap. And play Polaris. I know he can't play Phoenix Force yet, but we're going to move that over there. We also have Magneto to control where he would even play that. This probably is like a Deathlock or something. Carnage. Dodge. <laughs> Victory. Definitely a death lot. Boobs is in shambles. Ooh, hello, Bifrost. Uh, I'm thinking turn. Snap. Thinking turn one snap. Thinking turn one snap. We're gonna go uh Craven left side. And then everything else played on the left is going to 
boost the Craven, including that card. Cord. Yo, it's been a minute since I've seen a cord, guys. Project Pegasus, I'll be damned. My southern accent came out. Um, we go Craven, Elsa, Craven Polaris, maybe. Nah, let's go Craven Elsa. The Jeff play here is a bummer, but let's do it. Okay. We're not gonna punt that Typhoid to the moon yet. We still need her. Um, I definitely like the Polaris here. We're gonna do this is just great. We're gonna drag this Zabu left side, and then Craven's gonna get the boost of the year. Maybe the hood instead. Come on over. Nope, it's Zabu. Okay, so all those are gonna be uh insane. We've got Silk. Play those two down now. I don't think it really matters what we're doing here. Let's go with this. Okay, so Annihilus obviously is being played right. He's got one more demon. Don't forget it. Stop on your right foot. Don't forget it. Uh, Craven's going up to unbeatable power. He probably has Shang-Chi, though, with this with this build I'm looking at, this home cook. I wouldn't uh, be shocked. Yeah, I would I would I would say uh Craven's looking healthy. Um Okay, Magneto. I think we move Jeffrey. Do we move Jeffrey and Nightcrawler now? I think we do this. I know it, it puts us up for, for, for some scary things happening. Or we go with Nightcrawler right side. He only sends one of these, which I think it's the hood. And then we make, we make that up. We could also do this now too. I think that's what we do. Yeah, let's go with that. You could have made a case for both. There's the Annihilus. The hood comes over. Yeah, we feel okay here. Okay, so we're going to move Nightcrawler back over here. Ooh. Okay, Magneto's probably the play line here, guys. But because it's a cannonball video, we're going to do it for the science here. Uh, but Silk does move left side, which is kind of cool. I think he... Okay, well, he retreats. I, I Victory. knew he wasn't going to play right. There's just no way. So I think we would have had it either way. Since, I guess if we played like Shang-Chi mid, we hit the Sentry mid, it could have helped him. But then Silk could have bounced to either the mid or Bifrost. We had a lot of ways to win that. Guys, we've got a perfect starting hand. We're going to go Nightcrawler left side. We've got the Craven, the Kingpin. Uh, we love what we have. Our opening turns. probably going to go Craven. Depending on this guy's play, but... Okay. Ooh, Elsa Bloodstone. Do we throw her out there now? I guess so. Why not? Opponent snapped. They're snapping. We're going to go Elsa Bloodstone now. We'll probably go Craven uh, and or Kingpin mid or right. Multiple, man. Can we get Polaris? You know this is a Phoenix Force deck. You just know it. We do have Shang-Chi, though, for the insurance. Um, yo, I like the idea of doing this. And then playing Magneto and going crazy. Do we do that this early? Let's do it. Okay, so Phoenix Force is coming out. Where are they playing it, though? That's a good question. We also have Cannonball. Um, what a weird play this is. Let's go Cannonball. I guess here, yeah. Sure. That's a bummer, but sure.
Oh boy. So they can move this now. I think we can left side we can kill. I think we magneto. I don't hate this aero play. They can move both of these though. We're gonna have to just stack as much as we can mid right now. Okay. All systems go. So can we win this? If we go Nightcrawler here. Shang. Jeff. I don't think we can win this. We're going to play it out. I don't think we've got what it takes to win it. Maybe we do. We're going to definitely punch those two multiple men to hell. And then just depending on what he plays mid. Yep, it's going to hurt. If it's past 25, we lose. Watch a uh, quick little mathies, and it's uh, definitely past 25. That was, uh, regardless of fun game. Regardless of fun game. But we don't get the dubs. So we're going to kick this right in the face. Bam. I mean, that guy just had the pop off, right? He had all the cards he needed. And we come up just short, sadly. By one. Against a really good deck. We, we stuck through it. We stuck through it, but we came short by one. Okay, Apollo Justice gets uh, a random just card from us. We get his Ghost Spider. Hello, beautiful variant. Uh, Nightcrawly left side to kick us off. Orcus Forge. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's go Kingpin into the Nightcrawly lane. Interesting. Let's go uh, Jeff, maybe? Or do we want to go Craven? Let's go Jeff in the Ghost Spider, because why not? I guess we let him know that we have our Ghost Spider, but we're going to simply uh, swap her out for hopefully something better. Not Shang-Chi. That was timely for that guy. Definitely Phoenix Force. Multiple man. Cannonball is horrible here. <laughs> uh, it's fine. It's not that bad. Okay. I think we might snap on this. Let's go Spider-Man now. And then put him in the middle. If he's in the middle, Friendly then it's fine. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. We're just trying to, like, if it takes the multiple man, yeah. So if he has, like, Phoenix Force, like, this is kind of fine. Because we're kind of crushing the cards. Or the space that this guy has, right? We have maxed out mid, but... There's that. All right, can we get, uh... Shang-Chi? We also need to throw priority a little bit. All right, there's Shang. Does he go mid? Do we swing, guys? I think we swing for the fences here. I think we're going to go... I think we go Shung. I think he's going to move mid because he feels like it's safer. Worst case scenario, we Magneto. And we hope we don't win with priority here. Here's the goal. Here's the dream. Oh my god, he went right side. The giga brain on this guy. Oh my god, never mind. I take everything back. I was gonna say, I just like it. That's such the safe play. It blew my mind. He eats right. Oh, it's beautiful. 
I was gonna, I was gonna lose it. Okay, this guy's out of here. We're not gonna see the end of that. Cannonball really was the MVP here. Let's face it, guys. Really, uh, really did a lot for us here. Okay, we get the Elsa Bloodstone. I'll be damned. Um, let's go here, here, here. We're not gonna play Magneto. Just take one of these guys. Yeah. The cool part is there's nothing he can really shung chi. Yeah. There's the he's hitting us with a Cosmo dog, <laughs> and that's uh, that's GG. Cannonball doing the heavy lifting. Victory. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for me today. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to subscribe. Helps out a ton. And for those of you guys going to PAX East, I will be there. I will see you there, my friends. So be sure to come up, say what's up. And uh, as always, good luck out there and happy snapping.